In this clip, we're going to cover lesson practice number one for set one in this section of the notes. And the instructions read, convert each decimal into a fraction, first enter the decimal value, then choose the fraction option from the math menu and press enter. So to get started here, we're going to enter the decimal in first. So I'm going to put 0 0.15625. And then I'm going to the math menu, and the math button is located right underneath the alpha key. So I'm going to hit math, and I'm going to choose option number one. Now I can press one, or I can just hit enter, because that's the option that's highlighted right now. I'm just going to hit enter. And now we have this lined up on our home screen. We have this decimal, and this signifies that we're going to convert it into a fraction once we hit enter. And the fraction is 5 over 32. So let's do the next one. We have the decimal 0 0.09375. Scroll go to the math menu. Choose the fraction. I'm going to hit 1 this time to show you it does the same thing. And I'm going to hit enter. And the fraction is 3 over 32. The next decimal is 0 0.17. 1875. Let's go to our math menu. Choose choice 1. Hit enter. And we have 11 over 64. And then the last one's 0.25. So let's put in the 0 0.25. Press the math key. Choose the fraction option. I hit enter that time. And I'm going to hit enter again. And we have 1 fourth as our fraction. So let me fill in the notes. So the first one was 5, 5 over 32. The next answer was 3 over 32. And then we had 11 over 64. And our last one was 1 over 4. So go ahead and do lesson practice number 2. In this video clip, we are going to cover lesson practice number one for set two in this section of the notes. And the instructions read, evaluate each absolute value expression. First, choose the absolute value function from the number menu. Then enter the desired value, close the parentheses, and press enter. So to do this, we need to go to our math menu. So we'll press the math button. And we're not going to use any options from our math menu that's currently highlighted right now. You'll notice to the right of it, we have three other options or other menus we can access. And the first one to the right is the number menu, and that's the one we want. So hit the right arrow to bring up the selections there. And we are going to choose ABS, which is short for absolute or absolute value. So if I hit enter, this represents the first absolute value bar in my problem here. So the next thing I'm going to enter is the negative 8. So I'm going to use the negative sign, not the subtraction sign, the negative sign, put the negative 8, and then I'm going to use the right parentheses here to close the absolute value bar. Now on the calculator screen it appears as parentheses, but on paper what I just did is put that right bar in. So we hit enter and our answer is 8 for this first problem. So let's do the absolute value of 13. So hit math, arrow over to number menu, choose choice 1, type in 13 now, close your absolute value bar by using the right parenthesis, hit enter, and our answer is 13. This is a little longer expression, so hit math, let's go over to the number menu, Hit enter for the absolute value bar, and type in negative 9 divided by 3 plus 2. Close your absolute value, and hit enter. And we have 1 as our answer. So let's go to our last problem. Math menu, over to the number menu, choose choice 1, and let's type in this expression, 13 minus 10 times, and I'm going to put another set of parentheses here around this negative 2, because that's what our problem is telling us. 
So put the negative 2 inside those parentheses and then put another parenthesis for this absolute value bar. So if you look at our expression on our calculator right now, this parenthesis right here represents an absolute value bar. This parenthesis at the end represents the closing absolute value bar. And then the parentheses around the negative 2 are actual parentheses in the problem. So let's hit enter to see our answer. And our answer is 33. So let me fill in the notes and then we'll be done with this clip. So our first answer was positive 8. Oh, positive 8. Our second answer was positive 13. The answer for this one was 1. And the answer for our last one was 33. So go ahead and complete your lesson practice number 2. In this video clip, I'm going to cover the first problem in lesson practice number one and the first problem from lesson practice number two from set three in this section of the notes. And the instructions read, evaluate each expression. First enter the number in front of the expression, then choose in PR or in CR from the probability menu, enter the second number and press enter. Now the NPR represents permutations and NCR represents combinations. So let's look at our first problem here. We have 6P3. So I'm going to type in 6 first and then hit the math button. Arrow over to the probability menu. You can hit the right button three times to get there. And I'm going to choose option number 2, which is NPR. That is my permutation function. And then I need to enter in the second number, 3. Hit enter. And that is what 6p3 is equal to 120. So let's look at the first problem from lesson practice number 2. Here we have 10c4 plus 7c3, and we need to calculate that. So let's enter in the 10 first. Let's go to our math menu first. And then I'm going to hit the left button. That's kind of a shortcut to get the probability menu. And now I'm going to choose choice 3, because we're doing combinations. And I'm going to enter in 4 now. And then I'm going to add to that 7C3. So hit the addition sign, type in 7, hit math, arrow over to probability, choose choice 3 for NCR, and then type in 3, which is right here. And now that expression is entered in my calculator, I hit enter for my answer and it's 245. So let me write down the answers for those two. 120 for this problem right here. And then 245 for our 10C4 plus 7C3. So go ahead and complete the rest of the problems in lesson practice number one and lesson practice number two.